Good morning, and welcome to another Cross Point Southern Baptist Church weekly Bible study. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, besides uh, this, these Bible studies, Cross Point also live streams our Sunday morning services every Sunday at 10.45 a.m. So we hope you'll join us for that as well. <coughs> uh, we, uh, uh, we have returned to our uh, online only format. Uh, for both our services and our Bible studies. Uh, we hope to be returning to, uh, to an in-person uh, uh, platform on February 7th. Uh, that's uh, just a couple of weeks away. And uh, it, uh, the, those, those, uh, those announcements will be coming out uh, with whatever uh, decision is made uh, as far as what we're able to do uh, just prior to that. And remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. Uh, that helps us uh, to number one know that uh, the, that folks are watching the videos, and uh, uh, it, uh, it it helps us uh, see that that uh, the word is getting out. And also, uh, if you hit the little bell, it's over there. Um, you will uh, it'll actually give you notification uh, anytime uh, a live stream goes live or anytime one of these uh, Bible studies is up. So uh, that's that's a handy thing for you. Uh, if you're interested in getting a copy of the material that we use uh, dur during our uh, our Bible studies, both here online and also uh, uh, in person, we use a magazine uh, format uh, material from a company called Lifeway. It's called Explore the Bible, and uh, it's it's a great little book. Um, uh, like I said, it comes in a magazine format. Uh, this one is a large print, very easy on my old eyes. Uh, so, uh, but one of the things that I really enjoy about it is uh, it covers um, uh, a book or sometimes two books of the Bible uh, in a three-month period uh, with some some uh, fairly fairly in-depth study, um, and uh, it uh, it also has in the front a daily reading plan. Uh, you know, when you're you're going through a book like Luke, for instance, uh, you can't you can't really dive deeply into uh, in in a, a format like this. You can't really dive all that deeply into uh, into the book in in just uh, a three month period or you know thir 12, 13 week period. Um, so while it has uh the the weekly studies and they, they kind of jump uh it also has the, this reading plan that walks you verse by verse uh re reading x number of verses each day and uh, it, it walks you through the the entire book or books that are being covered uh on just by, by reading a little bit each day i tend to keep uh my my bible and uh, in a notebook together uh, handily with my Sunday school book, and every day I, as part of my morning devotion, I, I read uh, uh, whatever verses are listed. So uh, it's a handy thing. And you make some notes in the notebook. Uh, you know, if uh, if there's something that a verse that really touches you, or a verse that speaks loudly about what's going on socially uh, in the world, or or even if you uh, you read it and you look at it, and say, I just don't get it. Well, write that down too, and maybe uh, uh, go speak to your pastor or deacon, and uh, you know just sit down and say, "Hey, I was reading through this, and and I and I really don't get this. What 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 is this about?" So it's a it's a great tool. I would encourage you to get it. It's available, uh, like I said, both uh, um, in the magazine format or as a downloadable PDF, um, and uh, that way you can put it on your uh, your phone, your tablet, uh, your cloud drive, wherever you want to put it. Uh, so that you can you can take it with you everywhere you go. So this week we are at in uh, session eight uh, of the uh, the current uh, the current materials, which we are covering. And this is the first time I've ever seen this done. Is rather than just one book, because of the length and the depth of the book of Luke, we are only doing in this three month period, we're doing uh, Luke uh, chapters one through nine. Now there's 24, uh, 24 chapters in Luke. 
Uh, so at the end of this one, we're going to do another three months in Luke. We're going to look at Luke chapters 10 through 24. So uh, it's, it's awesome, uh, awesome experience to be able to get to share this with you. And again, if you, if you want a copy of this, you can go to www.lifeway.com, explore the Bible. So if you would join me in prayer, we will get started. Heavenly Father, we, we come to you. We, we thank you for the blessing of the internet. Father, we thank you for uh, the blessing of your word. Lord, since we can't get together uh, in person right now, uh, we, we, are, we are so blessed by being able to uh, live stream services. And uh, we are so blessed <clears throat> to be able to, uh, uh, to share your word through these Bible studies, uh, through, through the internet. And Father, even, even, even when things are, 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 are go back to normal, where, we're, where we, can, uh, we can reopen our churches and we can be, uh, we can be uh, in full attendance, Lord, I pray that you would, just, you would continue to bless this ministry of, uh, of being online and teaching your word and, and uh, live streaming the, the, the services so that, uh, that, that those who are shut in, those who may not have opportunity or means to, uh, to, to get out to, uh, to attend a Bible study or to attend a church service, that they would be blessed by it. Father, be with us now as we get into your word and study the book of Luke. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. <coughs> so as I said, we are looking at the book of Luke. And this week we are, uh, we're in session eight, looking at, uh, at how Jesus was rejected. And uh, we're going to be in uh, Luke chapter four, verses 16 through 30. Uh, we're first going to look at, at uh, Jesus' true identity and, and how it was revealed. And, uh, and then uh, their, their false understanding. Uh, the, the, those who were there when, uh, uh, when he announced literally, uh, who he was, uh, and, and their false understanding of, of, uh, who the Messiah should be and, and who he was. And then, and then their, their extremely misguided response to who he was. I'm sorry, I've got a real tickle in my throat again this week. Seems like seems like week after week that, that, that happens. Trust me, it's not COVID. <clears throat> so, as we get into this week's study, uh, yeah, there's the life is life is nothing but a series of decisions. Uh, in my in the secular world, I'm I'm a computer programmer, <laughs> and uh, I learned early on about what are called decision gates, and uh, uh, the it, it's uh, you know it, 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 this is a situation: do this or do this, and then the next you know you follow this path, and there's another decision gate says here's a, here you are. here's a situation: do this or do you do this, do you do this or do this, and. So life is the same way. I mean, think about, think about all the decisions you've made uh, already today. You know, maybe, uh, you know, deciding, deciding uh, what color of socks you're going to wear. Well, the color of socks that you decide to wear may be based on some other decision like, um, uh, well, I'm going to wear my brown shoes and tan pants, so I don't want to wear purple socks. <laughs> uh, or you may, you may decide, well, I'm not wearing socks today because I'm going to wear Crocs and, and nobody wears Crocs and socks. <laughs> so, but you see where I'm going with this, with the, with the decisions feeding into decisions. And, uh, and another to, to highlight another one, if you, uh, maybe, maybe you 
always going to work the same way. And uh, uh, you, 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 you go down this road and you turn right. Always go down the road and turn right. And one day you go down the road and turn right and you're hit with a massive traffic jam. Now you've got another series, a series of decisions to make, don't you? Now you have to, you have to say, okay, well, do I turn around? Do I try to get around it? Do I, do I just sit here and wait patiently and, and maybe talk to God a little bit while I'm sitting here in this traffic jam? <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of people do that. I know, I know, uh, I know quite a few people. I, I find myself doing that very often, uh, sitting in traffic and just saying, hey, God, let's, let's talk. <laughs> uh, but what if you had a warning? Now, remember, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about, we talked about John the Baptist. Uh, we talked about Jesus uh, be, being baptized. We talked, about, we, talked about, we talked about John the Baptist and the warning that he brought to the nation of Israel. And uh, but, so what if, you, what if you were given a warning? You know, maybe you've got, maybe you've got uh, the talk radio on and, uh, and you're, 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 you're hearing uh, traffic updates. And so uh, you decide, you know, you know what? If I turn right, I'm going to be in that traffic jam. So I'm going to go straight ahead instead. And because I, I really need to get, get to work on time. So that's a decision. But that's a decision based on information, right? So we saw a couple of weeks ago, uh, John the Baptist threw out the warning that, that, that the Messiah was coming. And when Jesus came to be baptized, we saw where, where uh, the dove descended and, and God, God said, this is my son. And at that point, then, you know, uh, as, as we read, uh, as we read a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, Satan took him away to, to, for, for, for trials and following that baptism and Jesus, uh, like I said, was led into the wilderness and then, and then after he had succeeded, he, he started traveling around and, uh, you know, he was going to, uh, uh, Capernaum, uh, some, some other areas and. He, so he's been traveling. He's kind of, he's kind of getting, getting to be known. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of things that went on in Caper Capernaum, uh, there you know, where, where Jesus, uh, uh, basically showed his, his, uh, his authority and his power. You know, he was the Lord showed that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. We see that, uh, uh, you know, we find out a little bit later in, uh, in Luke that, uh, um, you know, uh, what all went on there. But so now Jesus has circled back and he has come to his hometown of Nazareth. And <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, where he, he had, uh, he had grown up and where he had, uh, was part of uh, Joseph's um, uh, probably worked in the carpenter shop with Joseph, uh, and we we saw uh, when we, we when we saw the the birth of Jesus and 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 after he uh, had turned twelve that that inter the, that inter uh, period there where uh, we don't know exactly what he was doing, but so here we come to Luke chapter four verses sixteen to twenty one. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. As usual, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, and unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. He began by saying to them, Today 
as you listen, the scripture has been fulfilled. Now, let's focus on a few things here. You know, uh, Nazareth, Nazareth was a little uh, small agricultural village, and uh, you know, the residents uh, uh, were uh, uh, naturally interested in, in the return of the young preacher who had been brought up there. You know, uh, you know, local boy, local boy made good coming home. You know, everybody's, you know, uh, you know it's like, Hey, you know, this, we, we know, we know who this guy is. And, you know, but Luke emphasizes that as usual, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So we need to understand a little bit about uh, the goings on in the synagogue uh, on, uh, on the Sabbath and uh, uh, the, the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of align it to our church services. Uh, there was, you know, there was a scripture reading, uh, there would have been, uh, probably singing, uh, there, and uh, there was, uh, there, there was the, the, the study of the word, the, the word being you know, not the Bible that we have, you know, what they had at the time was, uh, was the old Testament. And when we, when we think about our Bible, we think about a book, okay? This is actually 66 books, okay? And each one of these, not like a book, like we think of a book with pages in it, these were scrolls, papyrus, laid out end to end and stitched together and written on and, and then rolled up on a rod. Uh, so. So, so the, the, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, he opened the book of Isaiah. He opened. He opened the scroll of Isaiah, and and he began to read. Now, but again, notice as usual. Now, in the synagogue, on the Sabbath, uh, visiting rabbis. It was. It was very normal uh, for uh, uh, for the. Uh, uh, the, the 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 people in charge of uh, of the service to to invite a visiting or, or in this case returning rabbi uh, to participate in the service, and uh, so and this is what Jesus had uh, had had done. You know, he he did this everywhere he went. On you know, on the Sabbath, go to the synagogue, stand up and read. Uh, and so, as usual, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. Now, there's, there's a couple of schools of thought on, uh, on why the, the, the scroll of Isaiah. <coughs> the, uh, one of the things that, 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 uh, that, that they did at, in that first century was uh, that they would they would uh, go through scrolls. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of Southern Baptist preachers uh, do sermon series. Uh, they may have uh, uh, you know an eighteen week um, series on on Luke, or they may have a twenty four week uh, uh, the series on on whatever. But they would take the scrolls. And they would circle through um, as, as they were reading. So they they had reached. They, they were working their way through Isaiah. And uh, um, now you learn so much when you're teaching one of these classes. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, I'd always looked at this as that uh, that you know when he turned to that that part of the scroll of Isaiah. Uh, you know, you just kind of, you know, scroll down through it and say, oh, you know, the, yeah, okay, this is the piece that I want it. This is the piece I want to use. But the scroll of Isaiah was handed to him. Okay. Which kind of, kind of supports that, 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 that thought that, uh, you know, that they were, they were going through the scroll of Isaiah. But if you, and I want you to, Focus with me for, for, for a second here. God. God is sovereign. God 
providentially guided the synagogue at Nazareth to work through the scroll of Isaiah. He providentially arranged and guided Jesus to come to come back to Nazareth in his ministry, in his travels, to come back to Nazareth and be there in the synagogue on the Sabbath, on the day when they hit Isaiah 61. Now, let me explain something. Our Bibles have verse numbers. They didn't have verse numbers in the, in the scrolls. It was just, you know, it was more like reading more of a book with, with and just take the numbers out of it. But God providentially had Jesus there on the day when it was, when his plan was Jesus is going to announce the fulfillment of Isaiah. And then Jesus was there for that purpose at that time because, that is, because that's how it works. Because that's how God works. But Jesus was there. And as he read through it, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is, is upon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Now, the poor, okay? We're not necessarily talking about, about uh, the economically disadvantaged or, or destitute. We're, we're more talking about the humble, the, uh, the, um, uh, the spiritually poor, uh, the, the uh, again, the humble. Yeah. And uh, likewise, <clears throat> He was sent to proclaim release to the captives. What captives? Somebody, somebody in jail who's going to open the jail, open the prison doors. In, in a sense, the captives that we're talking about here are, are those that are captive to sin. That he was going to set free. He's going to release the captives from sin, and the recovery of sight of the blind. Yes. At, Capern at uh, uh, Capernaum and, and other places that he had traveled, he had been healing. He was, he was becoming known. They knew, you know, they, they knew who this guy was. And healings were happening. They would happen again. They would continue to happen. And uh, so yes, he was healing the blind, but this was this was a different kind of blindness. This was uh, this was the, you know this was coming from from I, the book of Isaiah. The blindness that they're talking about is blindness to their own sin and the blindness to salvation. Those who had turned their back on God and they weren't they 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 couldn't see what was right in front of them. And then to, to free the oppressed. Well, they read that as, oh, the military leader, you know, they're, because they, they had been expecting this Messiah. And, and, and the Messiah that they were expecting was, uh, was a military leader. That, that's, that's, what they were, uh, uh, that, that's what they were looking for. And you got to understand that the, the, the Messiah them, Israel was used to uh, all through all through through history, all through the Old Testament. Uh, Israel would turn their backs on God; they would get themselves in some predicament, and God would send to them what were known as judges. Uh, they were they were referred to as as, uh, as mighty men. Uh, sometimes they were they 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 were they were extremely intelligent. Sometimes they were extremely uh, extremely uh, um, well liked. Sometimes they were uh, they were very strong. Samson was was one of them. Uh, 
that these judges would come and they would extricate Israel from whatever situation they had gotten themselves into by turning a blind eye to God. So, once again, they're expecting Messiah. They've, they've, they've read the prophets. They know that, that the Messiah is coming. And this scripture uh, out of Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, that's, that's Isaiah talking about the Messiah. And this, is, you know, this, is, uh, this, is, this describes the Messiah. And now Jesus has read this. And he's, you know, he's, he's read it. And they're, now they're waiting for the explanation. It's, oh, he's, he's talking about Messiah. And uh, again, they were they were expecting some military leader to come into their presence. So when they think they're gonna for, gonna recover his sight to the blind, okay, the, he's going to miraculously give give uh, people their sight back, uh, freeing the oppressed, releasing the captives. Oh, they're gonna. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to, this Messiah, he's going to overthrow the Roman Empire. He's going to be, he's going to be one of these mighty men of old, and he's going to overthrow the Roman Empire and, 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 and get us out of this one. And so he, he, he must be going to be a military leader. <laughs> but so Jesus rolls up the scroll, gives it back to the attendant, sits down, and it says that, the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. So, you know, they're, they're doing one of these. What's he going to say? Now, they're used to, they're used to when, when someone would stand up to read, they would stand up, they would read from the scroll, they would roll it back up, they would give it to the attendant, and then they would proceed to expound on what they had read. Uh, you know, it's, we, we refer to that as expository preaching. <laughs> Uh, preachers, uh, if, if you've ever sat under an expository preacher, that's what they do. They, they open up the scripture, they read the scripture, and then they explain it to you. Um, and, and they explain how, how you should apply it. So expository preaching, um, you know, it's, it, that's what was going on in the synagogue. But, but instead, Jesus hands the scroll back and sits down. <laughs> and they're all waiting to see what he says. And he began by saying to them, today, as you listen, this scripture has been fulfilled. In other words, Messiah is here. Very subtly, Messiah is sitting here with you. So we have this, uh, he's, he has, he's reached that point of revealing who he was he was letting him not letting them know that their long-awaited savior had, had finally arrived uh, you know the uh, the 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 oppression that he was going to, to to bring them out of was the oppression of evil he the uh the uh <clears throat> the captives that were going to be set free were those that were, that were captive to their sin the eyes that were going to be opened were the spiritual eyes of the, of the blind who couldn't see him for who he was. And that had turned and, and turned a blind eye to all that God does. <clears throat> so next, we get to verses, uh, uh, we, we get to verses uh, 22 through 27. Uh, where we have a, a kind of a false understanding and <laughs> they start looking at, okay, well, so who are you? And they were speaking well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. Yet they said, isn't this Joseph's son? Then he said to them, no doubt you will quote this proverb to me. Doctor, heal yourself. What we've heard that took place in, in Capernaum, do here in your hometown also. He also said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. 
But I say to you, there were certainly many widows in Israel in Elijah's day, when the sky was shut up for three years and six months while the great famine came over all the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them except a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. And to the prophet Elisha's time, there were many in Israel who had leprosy, and not one of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. So, yeah, they're, since they're all speaking well of him and they were amazed by his words, they, the Greek construction here in, in, in verse 22 is, uh, is kind of interesting, but it's, it's unclear as to whether the responses were, were positive or negative. It says that they were speaking well of him, but, and we would normally accept that as, as well, they, they were saying good things about him. But they, they were speaking well of him. They were, they were speaking a lot of him. They were say, they, there was a lot of chatter. You know, they're all back there. Oh my, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, listen, isn't that Joseph's son? Isn't, it, isn't that the son of the carpenter? Yeah, he, yeah, he left. He left a couple of years ago, and he's he, he's been he's, he's been traveling. You know, I've I've heard some weird things about him, but but that's the carpenter's son. Really? How can he? Where's he been studying? Where's he getting all? Oh, this is a really important. These are these are important things that he's saying. But it, again, it can be taken either way. It can be you know, that they were speaking well of him or, or that, they were, that, that they were saying, well, you know, you know, he's, pretty bright for, he's pretty bright for a carpenter's apprentice. <laughs> uh, but, in, but what he was doing, he was, he was speaking with authority. And they were, uh, uh, they, 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 they were, they, they were impressed with, with what he was saying. And they were amazed. And I, I love that. If, I looked at this in a couple of different translations, and, and, and it all comes out the same. They were amazed by the gracious words. It wasn't, it wasn't the words themselves that they were amazed at. It was, they were amazed that the son of a carpenter knows all of this and gets it. So again, they were, well, they were, they were, they were surprised. Um, you know, there were the other occasions, uh, Mark, uh, in Mark chapter seven, verses 28 and 29. Um, and there were a situation where, where, uh, Jesus was speaking with, with, with an unusual authority. Uh, also in, in, in Mark chapter one, even, uh, verses 21 and 22, um, you know, Jesus showed that authority. And he was preaching with that authority, but, but he wasn't preaching as the scribes did. He wasn't preaching the way that, that the scribes did. And he wasn't preaching what the scribes preached. Because instead he says, that no doubt you're going to quote this proverb to me, doctor, heal yourself. You know, we, we, we've heard that, we've heard that term. Does anybody really understand what that means? What it is, he says, doctor, heal yourself. In other words, this is an old saying in Jesus's time. This was an old saying, uh, for, for, for them to heal yourself. In other words, in other words, you're a doctor, put your own, put your own bandages on. Help yourself first. Help your hometown first. Uh, you know, help your own country first. Nationalism? Hmm. How about statism? Mm, townism. <laughs> it says, Doctor, heal yourself. In other words, do here. What, what we've heard that took place in Caper uh, Capernaum, do that here too. Well, what had happened in Capernaum? Capernaum, I have a really hard time saying that one, and I, I keep repeating it. I'll get it right sooner or later. But at Caper Capernaum, 
he was doing healings. He was doing, he, he was, he was, he was he, healing the blind. <laughs> he was forgiving sin. He was, uh, he, he was, he was, uh, healing lepers. And he says, well, well, do it here in your hometown too. And Jesus, we're going to come, we're going to, we're, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go through this. And then I've got, I've got a, a, the big point of, uh, uh, of, of what's, uh, what's to come. And he said, well, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. But I say to you, there were certainly men or many widows in Israel in Elijah's day. When the sky was shut up for three years and six months, while the great famine came over the, all the land, yet Elijah was not sent to any of them except a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. Now, why is it important where Elijah was sent? Well, it's simple. Jesus is referring again to the home field disadvantage. Elijah, and you can you can go back and and, and study uh, study up on Elijah and Elisha, and Elijah during the great famine where there there was no rain for three years and six three years and six months without a drop of rain. The famine was everybody it was killing everyone. And Elijah was, was out in the desert. He was starving. He was on the, he was on the run for his life. And, uh, because the, 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 the queen was, was trying to get the prophets all killed <coughs> and he was the last of the prophets. And he, he, he's about half dead. God could have sent him anywhere. He sent him to a town called Zarephath in Sidon. Sidon was a pit. Sidon was Sidon. Sidon was kind of in there with uh, with Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, Sidon was was a den of iniquity. It was a it was it was filth. It was sin. It was every kind of debauchery. And he sends Elijah there to the Gentiles, the filthy Gentiles. That's how the Jews saw him. The, the filthy, the, you know, Israel saw the, the filthy Gentiles in Sidon. But God used a widow there and provided through her to feed Elijah. It's a great story. You got it. You got to go look that one up. And the prophet Elisha, in his time, there were many, there were many in Israel who had leprosy. Yet not one of them was cleansed except Naaman. Again, get a get a Bible dictionary, get a concordance, and look look up these stories. Naaman the Syrian. Naaman, again, a Gentile. So Jesus is saying here, and you know, we, we see in we see in, in other scripture in uh, that, that Jesus says, I didn't I didn't come. I didn't come for you. I came for them. Again, Elisha sent to a Gentile and God provided, provided through the Gentiles for Elisha's well-being. And here Jesus is saying, look, Elijah, God knew, my father knew that Elijah wasn't, wasn't going to get anywhere, uh, going to, go, going to, uh, uh, to, to a, a widow in Israel. God sent him to Gentile. God knew that Elisha wasn't going to, wasn't going to get what he, he wasn't going to get anywhere. I wasn't going to be glorified by, uh, by, by him healing lepers. In Israel, I was glorified when I sent him to heal the Gentile. So again, 
You know, it's all about God's choice. It's it's all about uh, you know, it, it, the, the familiarity. Um, and uh, but Jesus is focusing on on God's grace being shown to that those outside of Israel. Understand? Hope so. <clears throat> but again, yeah, you know, familiarity. Just because because he's the hometown boy, you know, familiarity um, you know, doesn't doesn't guarantee God's work. You know, just because you just because you 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 hang out at the church, you know, just because you go and you sit and you or you watch YouTube videos, uh, it do, doesn't mean you're it doesn't mean you're saved. You know, watching watching these YouTube videos will hopefully get you. To a point of salvation, it will get you to a point of, of of acceptance. But just doing that isn't isn't going to get you. It's not going to get you to heaven. It's definitely not going to get you to heaven. <clears throat> Only accepting Jesus Christ and and his and his sacrifice on the cross. Only that is a correct understanding so moving along let's take a look at let's take a look at his, at their misguided response <laughs> going to verses 28 through 30 when the lord heard this everyone in, when they heard this i'm sorry when they heard this everyone in the synagogue was enraged they got up drove him out of town and brought him to the edge of a hill that their town was built on, intending to hurl him over the cliff. But he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. <laughs> so Jesus was, Jesus was preaching. Number one, he, like I said before, he, he wasn't preaching what, what the scribes did you know, the scribes, um, the, the, the scribes were, were educated. The scribes knew how to read and write. The, uh, the, the, you know, the scribes were, were teachers of the law. And, 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 that, and that is where the problem lies. They were teaching the law. And the law had gone so far afield from the law of Moses, and they had added so much to it. And it was, it, they, there was so much garbage involved that it was just it was crazy. Jesus was teaching something different. De Jesus, they didn't like what Jesus was telling them. You know, they we don't either. When I tell when I tell you that your that, that, that your life is full of sin, I don't I don't know who I'm talking to, do I? But your life is full of sin. I don't care who you are. You can be You'd be you could be you could be the greatest pastor of the greatest of the greatest mega church on the planet. Your life is full of sin. Because none of us is perfect. There is sin in everyone's life. Or you could be you could be the you you, you could be the world's worst alcoholic or the world's uh, worst worst uh, worst adulterer. You could uh, doesn't matter. Your life is full of sin. And Jesus has just stood up and said, I am the Messiah. <laughs> not so not quite so many words, not quite so not quite so blatantly, but that's what he was telling them. And so they 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 took him out. They were gonna run, they were gonna run him out of town on a rail. And uh, and they did. Like they drove him out of town. They picture this. They're chasing the people. Come, they're pouring out of the synagogue, and they're chasing Jesus. And they they, they chased him. You know, Nazareth was kind of like on the top of this little hill, and there's a well, there's a cliff. <laughs> and they chased him to the cliff. They were going to throw him off. Well, guess what? Jesus Jesus was going to die, but not today. His time wasn't hadn't come, but they 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 
got him to the edge of the cliff and now and now we we don't we don't know we don't know how he passed through them um we don't know if he like partially vaporized and just like like walked right through them we don't know if he shrouded cloaked himself you know, I mean, you know cling on you know he cloaked himself and he walked right through him they couldn't see him we don't know if he just was that skillful you know he was you know he's like bruce lee you know and, you know moving and 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 just wiggled right past him we don't know what that looked like we know that that he passed through the crowd and he went on his way so so yeah he <laughs> gone like been here preached it you didn't want to hear it and now you know but again, so there's their there's their misguided response. You know, they uh, and and the thing is, how, whatever that looked like, and they wanted him, they wanted him to do miracles. You know, like like uh, like like the, like he had done in in uh, in, in uh, Capernaum. Yeah, I got it right. And uh, they they wanted him to do the, to do miracles. And essentially, Jesus was. Jesus's response was along the line of this isn't going to become a circus. I'm not PT Barnum bringing bringing the miracle bringing the miracle wagon to town. That's not who I am and that's not what this is. That's not what it's about or like the commercial says it's not how it works. And the, the amazing thing is they, they chased him to the, to the cliff. They got up there and they were going to throw him over and he slipped through their grasp. They saw a miracle and they didn't even get it. <laughs> they didn't get it. They, he didn't, he wasn't going to give him, you know, it, all through all through scripture you know, we 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 see we see Israel asking for uh, uh, asking for for signs and and proof and 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 God says no I'm not going to I'm not going to give that to you Jesus said it the 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 Pharisees said well well you know, give me give me a sign prove it and he says if I give you a sign you're still not going to believe are you that way are you that are you that person that no matter what the sign is, you're still so blind that you can't see it. You know that's that's the blindness that that, that Jesus was going to was 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 going to uh, to uncover was the yeah you know, the, the blindness the those that are so blind that they can't see salvation. Are you one of those? Are you turning your back? Are you like these guys? Yeah. You, know, you you just as soon throw Jesus off the cliff. And then when you do get your miracle, when you do see your sign, I mean, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever prayed for a sign? Have you ever prayed for a miracle? Have you ever insisted on a miracle? God, show me, show this to me and I'll do this. God, you do this and I'll do that. Have you ever, have you ever, are you guilty of that? Have you ever done that? <laughs> Look around you. Look around you. You may be seeing your miracle and you don't, and you're just too blind to see it. I would pray that, 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 that Jesus would open that, would, would heal your blind, your spiritual blindness, that he would open those eyes and that, that you would see. So, so let, what are we going to do with this? Well, first of all, we need to understand that Jesus came to offer salvation. And the salvation that he's offering us came at the price of his own of his very own life on the cross <clears throat> also all people have to examine their pre presuppositions about Jesus you know we think we know what Jesus we don't think Jesus is uh, you know, I don't know the blonde haired blue-eyed Jesus or maybe your presupposition is the uh, 
uh, is is the Israeli uh, Jesus? Uh, I mean, the long haired, short haired, I don't know, whatever. Maybe your presuppositions are that Jesus couldn't possibly love you because you are so far gone. Trust me, I was there. I was. I was. I was the prodigal son. Uh, I I lived that, and. To, to this day, I am, as, as the crowd there in Nazareth, I am amazed at God's grace and God's glory and God's mercy. But, you know, if, if, we, if we have those presuppositions about Jesus that, that he can't possibly love us and that he can't possibly that he couldn't have possibly you need to throw those presuppositions away and then last of all rejection of jesus doesn't change his identity or <laughs> as uh, there's there, there, there's a saying that uh you know, there's a bumper sticker uh, that uh, in fact, I was just recently recently talking to uh, a pastor a mentor a friend of mine that um, that uh, about this bumper sticker that said uh, says you know God says it I believe it that settles it okay that's wrong <laughs> God says it I believe it that's it let's take that middle line out. Because it doesn't matter where you, whether you believe it or not. God says it. That settles it. So rejection of Jesus and not believing that Jesus is who he says and that Jesus died for your sins, your rejection of that means nothing. Your opinion of that means nothing. I'm sorry to... I, I'm sorry if I'm being being hard on you. If I'm being tough on you, you know I got my flannel shirt on today, and uh, you know just uh, you know being a little bit more comfortable than usual. But <laughs> I'm sorry if that I'm sorry if that offends you. Actually, no, I'm not. I hope it does, because maybe that'll open your eyes that you're not. It's it's not about what you believe. It's not about what you think. It's not. It's not about your, you know, your your poor little feels. It's not about any of that. Jesus is who Jesus is. Jesus died for your sins, yours and mine, and he he died in order to bring us salvation. He died to forgive our sin, to wash us white as snow. All right. Next. <laughs> so, memory verse for this week. This one is coming out of uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And not only is this not only is this directed at the Messiah, this is directed at every preacher out there, every witness out there, every deacon, every disciple, every follower of Christ, every Christian. The Spirit of the Lord is on you. He has anointed you to preach good news to the poor. He has sent you to proclaim release to the captives, the cap captives of sin, and recovery of sight, that spiritual sight, opening the eyes of the blind, the ones that through either just deliberate blindness or they just maybe they've just never really heard it, and to set free the oppressed, to, to, to take off that yoke of sin and to pro proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Praise the Lord. This is the year of the Lord's favor. 
You know, we talk, we talk about mercy. We talk about grace. Mercy is when God doesn't give us that which we so richly deserve, which is to burn in hell. And grace is what he gives us that we absolutely don't deserve, that we couldn't possibly earn, and that is salvation through Jesus Christ. So I hope, I hope you've gotten something out of this. This one's been a little bit different. And I, I, hope, you've, I hope you've been blessed by it. And so if you join me in prayer, we will, uh, we will adjourn. Heavenly Father, we come to you again at the close of our, of our study. We thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for, we thank you for Jesus. And we pray that someone out there, Lord, as I always say, I have, I have no, I have no, no knowledge. I have no right. I have no, no way of knowing what the outreach of this ministry or the result of this ministry might look like. Lord, all I can do is pray that someone out there was touched by it. Someone that someone needed to hear the needed to hear the lesson taught the way that that it came out. Father, I just I thank you. I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. And we thank you for Jesus Christ. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Okay.